Thank you for making time with us in the bulletin this afternoon. My name is Grace Hamwa Asari. The headlines. <music> Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development lifts one month ban placed on fishing. Also, traditional rulers urge to institute measures to compel parents to educate their children. On international front, thousands march on government's buildings in Hong Kong over a controversial extradition bill despite a government clampdown. Details of these stories and more coming up in the next 16 minutes. Let's go to our first story now. The Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development has lifted the one-month ban placed on fishing. Fishermen have been cautioned against the use of light and chemicals in fishing. Reports by Joseph Armstrong, Gold, Alogbe. It's 3 p.m. the landing beach of Pram Pram. Fishermen are busy painting and patching their net. It's been a whole month without doing what they're trained to do best. Fishing is their work. But in accordance with Section 42 to 44 of the Fisheries Act, the Fisheries Commission and the Ministry placed a ban on fishing, dubbed the Closed Season Mechanism. The ban, which was the first of its kind, was to stop trawler operations within one month. The one month is over and the fishermen are busy preparing to resume work. In a ceremony to officially lift the ban, the Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, Elizabeth Na Afolekwe, noted that continuing with a closed season policy with good fisheries management and enforcement practices against illegal fishing, it was suspected that landing of small pelagic fish by artisanal fisheries would increase from 15,000 metric tons to 90,000 metric tons by the year 2025. We officially lift the ban on fishing activities for the artisanal sector. The closed season has come to stay with us. We will continue with the implementation in subsequent years in order to realize a meaningful impact. Some fisher folks expressed their concern about the closed season. Those of them used to eat legal fishing and etc. they should stop. So that our sea should be fixed. Uh, one month again, again, maybe. Now, After the one-month ban, we are hoping to make more catch. Ghana has over 13,000 artisanal canoes, 80 Ghanaian flag trawlers, and 300 semi-industrial boats on her waters. Although fishing is very high, the catch had been extremely low. But after one month of placing a ban on fishing, the fishermen are hoping to make more catch. Away from that, candidates with special needs at the Medina New Road Circuit went through difficulties participating in the basic education certificate examination. They blamed the West African Examination Council, WAEC, for not providing logistics to enable them effectively participate in the exams. Ghana Education Service introduced the Inclusive Education Policy which provides an avenue for public basic schools to enroll persons with special needs into the mainstream educational system. However, implementation is bedeviled with challenges as logistics were inadequate to render the policy effective. At the Medina New Road Circuit in the Lanquantanan Medina Municipality, five candidates with special needs participated in the basic education certificate examination at the Far Amal Junior High and Queen of Peace Examination Center. Their participation was characterized with challenges. Creation education is the best uh, system that Ghana cannot afford to lose. It helps both physically, mentally and other forms of disability work together or learn together in the mainstream. It also challenged them to do more because when they are in the mainstream, they see others who are in good, normal, and say they want to copy them. So it gives them more room to improve in their condition. But what we face here is that the system is not welcoming them. Even though the policy has been made, but the system is not welcoming them because there are no structures put in place to sustain such people in the classroom. 
the mission team focused on two of these candidates, Nana Poku Ajiman and Abu Muhammad, who were both living with partial visual impairments. Nana Poku Ajiman has been living with the condition since class three, but is striving to acquire basic education. At once, there's nothing they can do about it. When the nurses are dead, they are dead, they're gone. So what we can do to help the child is uh, to protect the remaining uh, nurses so that they also don't go off. It's like if he strains the eye to, the remaining one could also go off and that means he will go blind. Doctors report indicate that about 80% of nerves connecting Nanes eyes are dead and nothing could be done to correct the situation. Nana Opokuajiman participated in the BEC but could not answer the objective questions, although an extra 30 minutes was allocated to persons with special needs. This is because Wayek did not provide shading and graph papers with large format size, although it did for the question papers. They had to rely sometimes on invigilators before they are able to shade. At the end of the examination, both candidates were disappointed they could not do the work. Yeah, for the graph, I was not able to see the, the boxes, how it, it was mainly on the paper. It pains me that I was not able to do it because that, that question was so easy that I could do it. But because of my eye, I was not able to do it. When I read and I'm coming to shade, I can just, I can know that this is the answer. Answer is A, but when I'm coming to shade on the paper, unless I take my time. So because of that, I couldn't use uh, the time I used, it was not enough for me. They are happy to have completed junior high school, hoping to gain admission into senior high schools, but they are scared their conditions could hinder their zeal. I'll be very happy to continue, but when I'm facing the same problem at the senior high school, I would like the government to help me so that the materials I can use to learn. Because the normal material that we are using, I find it difficult to use it. So if maybe they can do anything to help some people like we so that we can also learn better and write good. The Medina Old Road Circuit has one special needs coordinator who handles three schools where pupils with special needs have been enrolled. Shareholders want Wayek to fully consider the needs of persons with special needs a priority going forward. So we're hoping that Wayek will sit up and then put structures in place to work on such children with disability so that at least their condition may be better. Some of them, their eyes are there, but when they are writing, in course of writing in the books, it's then that you know that, no, this child cannot see. The writing can cross from one line to another. Uh -huh. So the authorities should just come down and liaise with the individual schools to get the children that have problems and needed special attention. Universal access to quality education and lifelong learning is one of the 17 sustainable development goals which is achievable by 2030. Conscious efforts and resources would be required to make the implementation of the inclusive education policy effective. Let's do stay with education because the Tikarini Evangelical Presbyterian Basic School in the Kwandai districts of the northern region has received sets of furniture from a philanthropist. Stanley Niblo reports the donation follows TV3's mission constant report on the difficulties pupils endure during classes. The Tikarini Evangelical Presbyterian School, since its establishment 14 years ago, has provided formal education to more than 4,000 pupils in more than three adjoining communities. Pupils are fortunate to have a decent school building, but it is challenged. The school lacks furniture, compelling pupils to sit or lie on bare floor to undertake academic work. In some classes, broken pieces of desk are what serve pupils. Even this is accessed on first come, first serve basis, while few proper dual desks are shared by four pupils. <laughs> pupils in most cases had to wash their uniform three times a week. Teachers find the situation disturbing. 
If it was very poor because children will be lying at and somebody you see him writing that he will be sleeping. The state of inadequate furniture coupled with the ripping off of the roof of their school building in February last year exposed both teachers and pupils to danger. But the Member of Parliament for Pandai, Matthew Nindam, released money from his MP's common fund to re-roof the school building after TV3 Mission's Constance report on the danger the situation posed to occupants. He also ensured the school receives a new finish. Two months on, a philanthropist, Angelina Yabua, has also donated 40 dollars desk to the school after TV3 aired the story. Her gesture has alleviated the plight pupils go through to acquire education. I'm an ardent duo of TV3, I must say, and uh, I, I follow your news, in particular the mission stories, and I looked at the plight of students in several places, so I just thought that it was fair to help. I had to contact a few friends and families and then also sell the idea to them. So one day decided and agreed that they would support me. I thought it was, it, was, it was good to give back to society. Something to help the less privileged to also come up, especially if you see the enthusiasm with which the children are still learning under those difficult conditions, then it is just fair that we all contribute and then help to build our nation. Angelina Yabua is hopeful of broadening her tentacles. The pupils are happy and confident their handwriting will now improve. I feel comfortable and it will make me to write very well. I am feel happy because we cannot sit well. We were lying down and writing. Some of our colleagues were sitting on the desk. One, one deck says people. Staff are equally happy. TV3 people also came. They assured us that they will help. And through that, actually, today we are in heaven. Because what you've seen is very good for us. It will help the children to learn hard. They commended TV3 for causing a positive change in the school. And the second thanks goes to you. Because highlighting this particular school made so many people so that really were in serious crashes and for that matter through your 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 initiative that has made our madam to also do a what a follow-up to this particular school district chief executive for bandai emmanuel Ata tatablata commended tv3 for helping to reduce the burden on the assembly i feel, I feel okay and feel proud and I'm very happy that I've gotten all this to also at least cushion me to be able to also say that uh, at least uh, your presence here has not been for nothing. At least people think that you have come to expose us, but at least it is yielding results for us. What we have received today, we have given to the school, they are very happy and the community members have also come around to appreciate what your expose has brought to them. And I think we have to applaud you for the good work done. Faustina Nayan is also the education director for the Pandai district. The children used to lie on their stomachs to write, and that would make them have a very bad handwriting. But with the furniture involved, they will now sit comfortably on the furniture and write and have a very decent handwriting. And teaching and learning will improve. They will no longer buy soup. That money that we're using every day to buy soap will now be their pocket monies to develop the family. Tikarini Evangelical Presbyterian Basic School has got three of its problems addressed, but would also require assistance to address its water situation. And you can also be like Angelina Yabua if you're moved by any of the stories that you've turned out so far. Let's just stay with education. Now, the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, is calling for a comprehensive national data on child labor in Ghana. Speaking at the 2019 World Day Against Child Labor, National Youth Coordinator at NAT headquarters, Thomas Musa, maintained the lack of credible data on child labor in the country remains a setback to the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals 8. 
Children in Ghana engage in the worst forms of child labor, including forced labor in fishing and cocoa harvesting, as a result of human trafficking. A recent Ghana Labor Standards Survey has shown that 21.8% representing 1.9 million children aged between 5 and 17 years out of the over 8 million population of children are engaged in child labor. 78.7% of the child laborers are in agriculture, 3.7% are in industry, while 17.6% are in the service sector. However, these figures appear not to be representative of the actual number of children in labor across the country as reports from other agencies have conflicting figures. A study on child labor in Volta Lake fishing showed over 242,074 are engaged in worse forms of child labor. Goals 8.7 of the United Nations adopted 17 Sustainable Development Goals urges the citizens of the world to take immediate and effective measures to eradicate forced labor and end molding slavery and human trafficking and secure the prohibition and elimination of the worst forms of child labor, including recruitment and use of child soldiers, and by 2025, end child labor in all of its forms. In the estimation of the NAT Youth Coordinator, these goals are not attainable if pragmatic steps are not taken to address fragmented data in the country. I think we need a research to be carried out to actually let us know the actual figures because it will bear me out that some people will tell you that in a Greek out of every 10 children you see one is into child labor and so to help us plan and then consistently fight against this particular menace I believe that the statistical service is time that they give us the exact data and the figures with respect to child labor then the figures must be there to tell us. Thomas Musa further lamented the lack of coordination in the efforts to ensure that children of school-going ages are enrolled and remain in school. Particularly with respect to the issue of accommodation, their welfare, and things that to help them deliver quality service to the community. This year's celebration was on the theme, children shouldn't work in fields, but on dreams. Students and teachers of St. Stephen Roman Catholic Basic School at Bodomasi in the Ashanti region study in deplorable classrooms. Chelsea Ifa Frema reports school authorities fear a looming disaster if urgent steps are not taken to re renovate the classroom block. Established in 1944, the St. Stephen RC Basic School is yet to enjoy any form of major renovation. The school has over the decades produced hundreds of students, but it can barely boast of decent classrooms. Windows of various classrooms are broken. Portions of the roof have been ripped off, exposing both pupils and teachers to environmental and safety risk. Erosion is affecting the staircase, leading to the various classrooms. Work on an ICT and library facility have halted for years due to financial constraints. Headmaster of the school, Jude Owusu Brefo, says the current state of the school is affecting teaching and learning. Teachers have to sit under a mango tree. So when it rains, teachers have to move their tables and chairs to join the pupils in the classroom. So when that situation comes, teachers cannot teach. The school has meanwhile organized its 75th anniversary to raise funds to support the school's development. An old student, Asari Bedia Kumaika, said the school's alumni will provide computers and furniture for the school. We are starting with furniture and fittings um, for the school. Now technology is driving everything in the world. So for ICT, they have only two computers. We will meet and discuss the way forward so that you will be able to provide computers for the school. Students were advised to focus on their studies and not indulge in drug abuse. Now to some other stories now. Traditional rulers have been urged to institute measures to compel parents to educate their children. The call was made as Ghana joined the rest of the world to mark World Day Against Child Labour at Nkwakwenia in the Setra East District 
of the Ashanti region. Children are the future of the world. However, when they are forced into labor, their mental and physical growth is impeded. The child is unable to go to school, depriving his or her right to education. This is just one of the many fundamental rights that get violated when a child is forced to work. The harsh reality, however, is that more than 200 million children are engaged in labor today. At least 218 million children between the ages of 5 and 18 are in employment globally. Statistics from the International Labor Organization, ILO, showed that 152 million of the global working children are victims of hazardous child labor. 72.1 million of these child laborers are found in Africa. Child labor occurs in almost all sectors of every economy, yet 7 out of every 10 of these children are working in the agricultural sector. It is unfortunate that society seems to have accepted it as a phenomenon, especially in Ghana. Indeed, we all witness child labor every day, as about 2 million Ghanaian children are still trapped in child labor. The 2019 World Day Against Child Labour, therefore, looked back on progress achieved over 100 years of ILO support to countries on tackling child labour. The day further looked forward towards the Sustainable Development Goal Target 8.7, calling for an end to child labour in all eight forms by 2025. <laughs> This year's celebration was on the theme Children Shouldn't Work in Field but on Dreams. We are committed to supporting the whole process. And what we should ask, we say, our vision for every child is life in all its fullness. How do we ensure that we give them life in all its fullness if we are using them in their fields? Executive Director of Child Rights International, Bright Appear, as well as representatives of various non-governmental organizations, urged the state to effectively collaborate with the local authorities to fast-track efforts at eliminating child labor. And now let's go to the presidency, where President Ekofuadu has, in principle, agreed to a request by Prime Minister of Barbados, Maya Amor Motley, to send some 375 Ghanaian nurses to Barbados to work in a number of their government's medical facilities. President Akufuadu and Prime Minister Motley held bilateral talks on Friday, June 14, in Bridgetown, Barbados. With Barbados facing an acute nursing shortage, the Barbadian Prime Minister, Mayor Amor Motley, said this would be a wonderful opportunity of cooperation between the two countries. Barbados has been facing an acute nursing shortage and we have agreed that immediately we will pursue the exchange of nurses and to secure nurses initially but also agree to joint education of nurses as we go forward to order to stabilize our healthcare sector in Barbados. President Ikufado indicated that Ghana has a surplus of nurses of which some are yet to be placed into public health system. The various things that we agree that we're going to do, supply of nurses, this, that, that, and the others, all of them, we actually do them. That is what therefore will make meaningful today's meeting and, and, and exchange. We have a surplus of nurses. Placing them all in our public health system is one of my headaches because there's been a lot who have been produced and for several years I've not been able to do anything with it. So I'm going back. I'll be back in Accra on Monday. The week after, the Prime Minister will hear from me on this matter of the nurses. President Ekofado is the first Ghanaian leader to visit Barbados. The two leaders agreed to reactivate a 2005 cultural technical and scientific agreement signed between the two countries, an agreement which has been dormant for 14 years. The discussions also touched on tourism and transportation. 
As a demonstration of the close ties between Ghana and Barbados, the president expressed his commitment to the establishment of an honorary consulate in Barbados, with Barbados set to establish a high commission in Accra by the end of 2019. And now, the blood transfusion unit of the Confanochi Teaching Hospital has benefited from the double-track system of the free senior high school policy. Managers of the transfusion unit say the continuous presence of students in schools has led to increase in stock of blood compared to a previous year's reports by Beatrice Spiogabra. Young people constitute about 70% of blood donors at the Confanochi Blood Transfusion Unit. Head of Blood Donor Recruitment Services, Kwame Asensu Mensah, revealed that donors are mostly students in second cycle institutions who answer to appeals to voluntarily donate blood. The adult population have over the years contributed about 30% of donation. We take the chunk of our blood from students those in secondary schools in particular. And because of the new system, which keeps the students in school almost all year round, we get them in school almost any time we go, we go over there. That has kept us sustain the supply of blood all through the year. Voluntary blood donation helps stock the transfusion unit to make the essential product available for accident victims, women in labor, and others who readily need blood to save their lives. Members of the Calvary Charismatic Church CCC in Kumasi have for six years organized blood donation drives to stock the cath transfusion unit. The annual exercise falls on the birthday of the founder, Pastor Ransford Obing. Speaking to the media after donating a pint of blood, Pastor Ransford Obing debunked misconceptions about blood donation. A lot of people need blood and there is some misconception about blood donation. So a lot of Ghanaians feel reluctant, they are afraid. And so as a leader, if you take the lead, then you are breaking those misconceptions and letting them know that it is possible, you can do it, nothing will happen to you. The pastor encouraged the public to demystify perceptions about blood donation. Yes, so watching Midday Live on TV3, also live on DSTV Channel 279. We're back with more stories after this break. Don't go away. So let's start business with something good because the price of domestic gas will soon drop on the markets, according to Deputy Energy Minister Mohamed Amin Adam. He revealed that government is recalibrating domestic gas prices to be able to achieve the targets. The decision to recalibrate follows various complaints from businesses about the high cost of the commodity, which makes it difficult for their businesses to thrive. While delivering his keynote address at the Ghana Mining and Energy Summit in Accra, Deputy Energy Minister in charge of Petroleum, Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam, said gas prices will be reduced soon. We are also recalibrating domestic gas prices, negotiating with the oil and gas producers to ensure that we bring gas prices down. We are doing all this because we know that cheaper sources of power it's essential for growth of our economy. It's essential for your operation as mining companies. Cost of electricity has been one of the major challenges facing the mining sector. The minister assured that the era of constant power outages is over with various government interventions in place to also reduce the cost of energy. I want to assure you that as partners in development, the government is committed to working with industry by ensuring that your businesses are safeguarded and not disrupted by unplanned energy challenges. The theme for this year's summit is harnessing mining and energy to accelerate national development. 
Now, talking about domestic gas, the National Petroleum Authority, NPA, says piloting of the cylinder recirculation model will soon take off in Obuasi and Kwai Bibrim, despite protests against the policy by LPG retailers across the country. The policy, according to NPA, is aimed at safe and efficient distribution while increasing access to liquefied petroleum gas nationwide. It reports by Ibrahim Abubakar. Chief Executive Officer of the National Petroleum Authority, NPA, Hassan Tampuli, says funding has been secured by the Ghana Cylinder Manufacturing Company to produce the 37,000 cylinders needed for the pilot exercise. He said the policy is to ensure at least 50% of Ghanaians have access to safe LPG by 2030. The NPA CEO was speaking at his stakeholder engagement on the cylinder recirculation model in Kumasi. This will help achieve the policy goal, which is to ensure that at least 50% of Ghanaians have access to safe, clean and environmentally friendly LPG for domestic, commercial, and industrial use by the year 2030. He said risk assessment of LPG facilities would be stressed to cover about 66 senior high schools across the country. The policy is suspected to create 4,500 direct jobs for the youth. This does not affect current jobs of LPG world transporters, LPG bulk distribution companies and LPG bulk storage companies. Ashanti Regional Minister Simon Osemensa called on the public to support the cylinder recirculation project to help curb fire outbreaks. He urged the NPA to intensify education on the implementation of the CRM to enable all homes to have leak free cylinders. The Guinean remains the major priority to this government and no stone will be left unturned to ensure they benefit from this policy. We need to implement the policy and assess how to solve the peculiar needs of the industry and consumers as a well. whole. The stakeholder meeting is part of the NPA's nationwide exercise to engage members of the public on the policy and take their inputs for a successful implementation. Some participants lauded the policy. Some people live far from gas filling stations. Now that they have introduced a door to door service, it will help. Initially, whenever I had a problem with my gas cylinder, I spray it myself. But through this workshop, I know it is a bad practice. The cylinder recirculation model was necessitated by the gas explosion at Atomic Junction near Medina on October 7, 2017, which claimed and left over 132 persons with various degrees of injuries. To some other stories, the engineer who worked on the Denugu Dam project, a small earth dam under government's One Village One Dam project, has assured residents they would not be cut off from accessing basic services in the area. This follows residents' concerns of being shortchanged. The residents who gathered at the banks of the Denugu Dam claimed the dam has caused inconveniences to the community. But the engineer assured them the technology used to construct the Denugu Dam can withstand any rise in water level. He disclosed work on the Denugu Dam is about 70% completed. He outlined scope of work left to be done during the second phase of construction. At Yabogo, the irrigation system to assist in the dry season farming had been installed. The Minister for Special Initiative, Mavis Hawakum Singh, indicated work has been slow because contractors have had to pre-finance the construction. Maybe the money is not there, readily there, available for them to do all the work. It will take about three, even four months before one certificate is being paid. So most of them are waiting for their payment to do the rest of their faces. She revealed the cost of the dams are within 200,000 and 250,000 cities. Let's do health now, where the sector minister, Kukwachi Manmenu, has expressed government's resolve to improve access.
Universal Health Care speaking at a program. The minister said construction of a modern district hospital at Weta is a clear manifestation of government's readiness to prioritize the health needs of Ghanaians. Work on the multi-purpose 80-bed capacity district hospital, which started last year, is expected to be completed in September next year. The project, when completed, is expected to have an administration block, OPD, two operation theatres, surgical and medical wards, maternal unit, amongst others. The project engineer on site, Carl Procedure, took the sector minister and his entourage round the project site. The minister also called on the Awo Mafia of Angno State, Togbi Sri. The Awo Mafia appealed for the construction of a district hospital in the area. Angloga and its environs are so huge that we need more, more than two hospitals. But very unfortunately, we don't even have one. What we have here is a health center. We cannot cater for the people of the area. The minister's next port of call was the Keta Municipal Hospital. The sector minister later visited the Keta Municipality where he interacted with staff and students of the nurses and midwifery training school. Over 100 residents in and around Kwame Nkrumah Circle have benefited from a free health screening exercise by the Great Thinkers Club, with many being diagnosed of various diseases including malaria and high blood pressure. Participants were also admonished to keep a clean surroundings to stay safe. Malaria has been a major cause of poverty and low productivity, accounting for about 32.5% of all OPD attendances and 48.8% of under five years admissions in the country. The life-threatening disease is caused by parasites transmitted to people through the bite of infected mosquitoes. Governments through its agencies have made efforts over the years to subdue the canker. While some Ghanaians are able to afford health care and regularly visit the hospital for checkup, others don't enjoy same. In a bid to assess the underprivileged to access health care, Great Thinkers Club, a non governmental organization, has organized a health screening exercise for residents living in and around Kwame Nkrumah Circle. The health educator at the Ridge Hospital, Kofi Adams, explained they aim to make health care accessible to all with the health screening exercise. Um, cases being recorded at Ridge Hospital and then at Dabraka. So we thinking and going through these statistics thought that uh, it is wise we also uh, picking from the World Health Organization on the 25th of April, though we, we had to extend it a little bit, but we are still on the theme of you know malaria in Africa. So that is why we actually chose to do it around circle. So we have uh, the endemic areas like the Adabraka, Odona, Nima areas, you know, all coming in to help. A physician assistant at the 37 military hospital, Ewenam Mawe Nyefia, urged citizens to regularly go for checkups. The malaria parasites may be in there, may be dormant in their system now. Maybe when, they, when the immune system has become low, then that is when the malaria parasites will also start misbehaving. President of the Great Thinkers Club, Prince Charles Akom, noted the group is determined to support the underprivileged in society. We are yet to receive donations from the international community. So we believe with a little that we've been able to mobilize, we've, we've done so much with it. So when these international organizations come on board, we'll be able to do much better. <laughs> Be your man with all the latest in the world of sports. Don't go away. Some industry players have expressed worry about the lack of growth in the creative arts industry. Speaking at an artist branding workshop, Chief Executive Officer of Event It Ghana, Ricky Anoche, attributed the slow pace of growth to the unwillingness of artists to learn and take up new challenges. Our music system and the creative arts system in Tuzali is an A. Few people are at the apex, close there. 
around it comes down so at the base mass you can count over three four thousand upcoming artists over there but at the top very few the dream for every up and coming artist is to headline mega events sign endorsement deals and to become a household name within the creative space periodically some stakeholders organize conferences to help artists shape their craft truth of the matter is that people are not eager to learn so i think that we need more but the people that it is meant for are not consuming and that's why you every day we hear this master class here master class there whatever but is it going down to the right people no chief executive officer of evented ghana ricky anochi encouraged artists to undergo career development workshops as it will help shape their craft every artist in ghana say i want to go international but what have they learned what have they equipped themselves with that can give them that access to cross the border no I mean, we are happy to play the pojemos, we are happy to play the funerals and small, small gatherings. And they, when the girls get to know us, hey, Charlie, who need me? Charlie, many artists, as soon as you. Some underground arts present at the workshop share their experience. It's, it's really great, and I've really learned a whole lot, and I'll just apply it to my career and see the way for it. Some of us, we started by giving up and those kind of things. But now me coming here today, I've given you hope to go and do more. So it is good. We need such things. We need that. Need... That's all we have for now. Many thanks for joining us on behalf of myself and the rest of the team. We say happy Father's Day to all fathers and continue being the best that you can ever be. Good afternoon.